instead, I just wanted to share the Abbo song with everyone because there is some news related to the Abbo's, and I've never had an opportunity to play the song on stream, oddly enough. Uh, so I figured now would be the appropriate time, and I'll get into that in a second. However, I want to get, I, I never, I've listened to this song, and I've always kind of liked it because it's, it's really catchy, obviously. After all, it's made by a white man. Uh, I never noticed how like disaffected all the the kids singing in it like anytime that you can see them singing you can just tell like how much they absolutely do not give a fuck they're like yeah don't sniff petrol from a can and then this guy adam thompson had to go in and mix this with a kind of professional finesse uh and act and completely save this audio and make it into something catchy which is why it sounds so um overproduced for what it is because the performances aren't there is the issue so the significance of the the abo song if you don't know this is from an ab aboriginal tribe in australia is that australia over the last week since i didn't do a stream on friday last week um i have had a full week to collect some news uh one of the main things is that in australia there was a constitutional referendum to amend their constitution and add a new clause um, which would give what they call a First Nations voice. And the full title is the Aboriginal First Nations Indigenous People and the Tory Strait People, or, or the Tory Strait Indigenous People. So it's three different groups, the Aborigines, the uh, Indigenous, and then the Tory Strait. And I, I don't know the distinction, I just know that the Tory Strait is between Papua New Guinea and Australia. And there's like a bunch of like tribesmen on those islands. So that's what they're referring to. And they're not technically Aborigines. So they don't call them that. And I don't know what the First Nations are. I don't know how those are different. Um, anyways, so the I, I kind of dug into this because I was curious about it. And from on its face, if you just tell someone what the actual text of the proposal is, it does not make sense. The proposal basically just says, should there be a informative council in the Parliament of Australia, which is comprised of Aboriginal, Indigenous, and First Nations peoples for the purpose of advising the government? So they don't really have any power. They don't have a vote in anything. It's just that the government's like, hey, oh, so we uh, want to dig for petrol right here, eh? And, uh... Can we do that? Is there like any spooky, spooky stuff that happens there? And then the aboriginals would be like, um, actually, yeah, that's super haunted by like bad Ooga Booga shamans and shit. So we're going to have to, you know, get a million dollars to cleanse this area of the bad spirits. And uh, when we get that million dollars, we can put our, our tribal shaman to, to clear, clear the spirits. So that's like what the, the point of it was. Uh, the, 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 the thing has failed and I, I was really struggling. Like, even if it was like a thing where it's like a, do you want like a white people vote? Like a, a white people council voice voice. They call it the voice. Do you want a, like a Aboriginal voice in parliament? I'm trying to think like if there was a constitutional amendment to add a white voice to the government, I would probably still vote no. Cause I don't know what that means. It doesn't make any sense. And then someone explained it to me. That in Australia, when you have a, because it, it's kind of weird in parliaments, there's not usually like a, a two party thing where, like in the US, there's like the red team, blue team, like in Team Fortress 2. Uh, there's usually a little bit more variety in, in those governments, but then what happens is that they still form red team and blue team, anyways. So, and they're just called opposition, the majority, and then the opposition. So, but it changes just like Democrats and Republicans in the U S so in Australia, it's like every so often the progressive types get into the majority and then they establish the first nations, Aboriginal and then indigenous voice council. And then the conservatives take it over the next time, just like in the U S and then they dissolve it because it has no fucking purpose. And this has gone on for a while, I've been told. So they, uh, eventually the progressives that are currently holding the office are like, we should just make this a constitutional thing so they can't dissolve it every single time they take over. Uh, teams have been scrambled, basically. So uh, that's what the whole point was. And then um, they didn't, 
I feel like in the they probably might have gotten their way if they had phrased it like that. But in the way they actually phrase it, it literally just says, do you want like a voice for indigenous first nations and Aboriginal people in parliament? And I think the answer would be no for most people because it doesn't make sense. You ask the average person, do you want to overcomplicate your government just a little bit more? And they're going to look at that and think, um, that sounds like a waste of taxpayer dollars. And of course, the only people who voted for it were like in the, um, the, the cities anyways, especially um, the Australian Capital Territory uh, was the... I want to say the only place that had a majority yes vote and every the actual states um, did not have a yes vote. None of them did. So every single state rejected it uh, in a majority. And some in, the, uh, I think in a 66 per, yeah, there was one, Queensland rejected it with 69%. So that was a super majority in Queensland, um, which is often considered a very conservative area in Australia, I'm pretty sure. There was a big outrage about Queensland in the last election, if I remember correctly. Um, and I think... If I may be, be honest, I think Queensland is also the area of Australia outside of the Northern Territory, which has the most aboriginals. Um, I've known people in Australia who were in Queensland, and they have stories about how the aboriginals like treat white people in the area. So it's not surprising to me that the people with the most exposure to aboriginals are the people who are less c kind towards them and want them to have a voice in government. Um, so there you go. That's the story. Now, um, when I was listening to the song, as I mentioned, I was kind of l really listening to it for the first time and kind of like marveling at how, I, like how bad the vocal performances were. And then I, I couldn't, I, I kept getting swept up in this part right here. I cut the volume back on. We call the leaders a Nyan Yatara land is how that it, I've tr desperately. Tr this is the hardest word I've looked at Polish words. Nyan Ta land is the hardest fucking word I've ever tried to pronounce ever. Um, so I was wondering who are the people of Nyan Yatara land. So I looked it up and there are a couple tribes in the Northern Territory who make up the Nyan Yatara lands. Um, they speak a variety of dialects, and I decided I would do some research in them because I was curious about the Nyan and Tyre lands. Uh, oh, I had a skit line up. I ruined it. Hold up. I want to read this. Um, Noel Pearson says, The elephant uh, and mouse problem has been characterized by indigenous affairs. The fact that Aboriginal people make up 3% of the Australian population have extreme minority status have had no choice but to tolerate discrimination. Uh, devastating verdict. Australia tells First Nations people you are not special. This is uh, effectively when Australians, when the Aboriginal people woke up the next day after this vote, this is what happened. Where's my hamster? I cannot find my hamster. My day is ruined. Is this one? That one shows up. Why doesn't this one shows up? There's the pumpkins. Where is my hamster? Uh oh. This is a disaster. I'm gonna have to find this. I think I can do this again. Okay, this works. That works. Okay, we'll have to just settle with this for right now, because that's what I can do. This is very important. Okay, there we go. We're all, it's all fixed chat. Don't worry about it. Don't lunch me. Uh, okay, so let's do some... Uh, uh, <laughs> this is all I want to point out. I looked into the Nya, 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 Nya lands, and I noticed this, like... Elf, working as a teacher in the Nandara lands in the Western Nandara Desert. Nandara lands. Do you have the personal and professional qualities that are needed? To Can make... you teach these kids? Can you reach these kids? And I looked this up and I'm like, okay, I'm curious about this. And then I noticed <clears throat> this woman, this Nandara land woman has 
beard. Well, that's curious. A little bit unfortunate. I mean, you know, menopause is rough. I, I guess some women get beards after menopause. And then I uh, looked ahead, um, and I found this. This is Naga, which is the home in the Nyan Taiga lands. Uh, and there's a woman who wants to give her story about about her lands. Uh, the, to be clear, the Nagan Yataka lands. The landscape. This afternoon when I was coming this way, I said to the driver, I feel homesick. When I got here, I went and got my cup of tea, went and sat down, and there in front of, what, front of me was Mangura. I was really happy and thrilled, and I said, hey, that's Warudara. I felt really happy when I seen Mangora here. <laughs> you, uh... That was obviously a very touchy story. So if you're only listening, um, this this woman has a full beard. This woman has a goatee that would put, put a lot of men to shame. I'm thinking, okay. So two for two, both, both videos have women who have beards. That's strange. Then I found... The Nyagin Tara Patan Tara Young Kun Tara Women's Council. Um, to be clear, that is literally what it's called. I will not reattempt that, but that is what this is called. Um, so and then I scan through it, and I don't think any of the I think there might have been one woman in this that has a beard. However, I just kind of, I kind of would like. I just want to want you to listen to her speak for a second, like when she introduces herself. My name is Rini Kolita, and I live in Moritulu. They speak so slowly. I have never like it is you like oh, between even like the little kids like we call it as lands. you don't sniff petrol from a can it's like really slow and then this woman talking about her homeland she's like so I own the bus and then I say I want to go to Naga to see the Nagaland Highlands again and when I go and I see the Bungumba I'm like in my heart yes this is good. And then these people are just like, they're this. Look, I am. There, there is evidence on this earth that there are different kinds of people. There are different breeds of dogs, and that's okay. There's no nobody's better than anybody else, chap. If you wanna, if you wanna live in the the desert and you wanna eat sea turtle and uh, drink. And not participate in society. I be I fully believe that you should be able to spend your time in Yan Thailand's doing that. And white white man should fuck off. Okay. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody about um about this because there's a there's a controversy in regards to how much money Aboriginal people in Australia receive. Uh, I, I've heard varying figures, uh, something like uh, up to, up to forty billion is the highest I've heard, and that's Australian dollars. So keep in mind. But I've been told that Aboriginal people receive a stipend from the government, basically, for forty billion dollars every year. That costs the Australian taxpayers money. Aboriginals, I think, occupy. I want to say like, f it's a ridiculous number. It's like one in fifty Aboriginal people are incarcerated currently. I'm pretty sure one in 50 are presently incarcerated in Australia. It is an, a staggering amount of them. Um, like it, it blows the American African American population crime statistics out of the water in terms of how much they spend. So it's like, and, and you might think like that's a burden, right? That's a burden. And it's weird. They have their own tribal system. Uh, like their their court systems are segregated. They have their own lands. They have their own laws. They have their own systems, and and so on and so forth. And then they get paid forty billion dollars just to exist on the reservations. And people in Australia have complained about this. However, I have heard a very strong explanation uh, to support the setup. 
And that is that these people that I've just showed you clearly have their own preferred way of living. They literally just want to eat sea turtle, burn kangaroos and brush fires and eat them kind of like semi raw and drink. And the white man, Mr. Cook came to Australia and inflicted upon them capitalism. So now the process of going out to their territorial waters and spearing sea turtles through the skull and eating them has overhead to it that did not previously exist. And that's really not fair to them that they now have to pay to eat their sea turtle and burn their kangaroo. And I believe it is economically sensible to just pay them to drink and eat sea turtle. It is the most efficient, agreeable way to resolve the issue of the First Nations in Australia. You just put them in the Northern Territory, let them do whatever the fuck they want, and then occasionally, sort of like in Fortnite or uh, Call of Duty, just drop care packages in the middle of the desert with like money and alcohol. And they will be perfectly happy forever and ever. And they will ne for 40,000 years. And they will never ask any questions about this arrangement. They will probably pray. They will get on their knees and pray and do chants and dances around the cargo boxes that are dropped in the middle of the desert as, as a gift from God. And this is an acceptable solution. This is cheaper than any other. This is cheaper than integration. I'll, I'll phrase it like this. It is cheaper to, to give them the fire water and the harpoons they need to spear sea turtles to the back of the head um, than it is to try and you see this you see this right here this right here this is expensive this costs more than 40 billion dollars a year all right this shit costs money and it costs time that could be better spent for for other things just give these people a hundred dollars a week and a couple shots of of, of vodka that's cheap. And then they can just fuck off. And every literally everyone will be perfectly happy with this arrangement. This is my this is I have given this a lot of thought. And I believe that the, the what I'm trying to say here, chat, is that um the the people of Nyagantara land deserve reparations in their territory, and they should be left alone to act in accordance with their traditional laws, okay? And that's how you phrase that to get that booted. Is the race has been over yet? No. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.